Greetings, fellow Earthlings. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at the James Donkey A3. All right, make your jokes. I don't know what's up with the name. It's not a big deal to me. I mean, I'm not gonna forget it. If that was their intention, I guess they got, they got that part right. Anyway, this is the A3. This is yet another entrant to the 75% field. I have been trying to work a, I have been trying to work a 75% video for a while, uh, a budget oriented 75% uh, video, something to cover the choices uh, that are 75%, mostly with knobs, some without. Anyway, every time I prepare, oh wait, there's a new one. Oh, I should add that to the list because of, because of this, because of that. Long story short, I haven't gotten that far yet, so maybe I'll stop at this one. We'll see. Anyway, if any of you guys are familiar, and I, of course I don't have it in here, but this is the same manufacturer, James Donkey, is the same manufacturer than this one you might recognize as the Keep Monkey 1800. Uh, they basically just had it white labeled to add their logo to the side. Um, but in other markets, it was sold under the uh, uh, the James Donkey 1800, I believe was the model. 1800M it might have been because it is a three mode um, wireless and Bluetooth. Oh, and as well as 2.4, so three mode. Um, and it has different type of angles. But uh, I did a review on this one. It's actually quite good out of the box. I do intend to come back and mod it, but out of the box, this keyboard was extremely impressive. It sounded good, um, better than a lot of stock keyboards, especially at the price at the price point. I was excited. I liked what I saw. It has a metal knob, but it's black with an orange bottom, and I'm, I'm kind of a fan of two tones. So, but anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, for the spec geeks, I have already opened her up and taken some measurements so that I could provide those to you while I'm doing the video. But before we take a look at the keyboard, let's just do the random test of what's in the box. We've got a very bare uh, manual. It's about four pages long. Um, tells you the controls. Half are in English, half are in Chinese. Wired mode, 2.4 gigahertz mode. Um, let's see. I'm guessing the 2.4 gigahertz receiver is in there. This is the bottom of it. Okay, so it's not in there. So we'll leave the manual out for right now. Let's go ahead and see what we got back here. We've got a decently braided um, USB cable. We've got got a couple of H's. Um, oh, they're gaskets. Huh? I haven't seen gaskets like this. I, I thought they were hard, but um, upon pressing them, I see that they're soft. So looks like I got a couple of spare gaskets. We got the Allen wrench for the case, and I'm gonna assume the screwdrivers for the plate PCB assembly or another part of the interior. Uh, but we have our 2.4 gigahertz gadongle. Good dongle, G dongle. Um, we have a keycap, wire keycap puller, thank you, and a horseshoe puller, no thank you. Um, cable is decent enough but it's it's about about the cheapest you can get nylon it, it feels like it's a, a almost like a 28 30 gauge um, underneath there so right up front we do have a south facing keyboard now this is a, a plastic I'm not sure if it's ABS or PC uh, I would guess it's probably um, PC but don't quote me on that it looks like it had oh. It was just a little bit of oil, it looks like. So it does have the black. Now, I find it interesting that it actually has on the plate, just like on the key monkey, it has the name of what key goes there, the standard, I guess, because, I mean, they can be reprogrammed. I still haven't jumped into the software, so, but I know they can be. But it says insert, so that's probably the function home key is what it is. Um, 
Although it would be funny if it's actually insert, not what it says on the on the plate but anyway so we've got uh obviously compatibility for five pin switches so pcb or plate mount both will work just fine uh the plate is a um almost feels like a fiberglass but if i had to guess i would say it's probably pc i should have probably looked up the specs but i don't remember um i do believe that it has cotton on the bottom and it definitely has a padding some sort of pour on rubber between between the two you know what let's go ahead and just take a quick look on the inside while we got it um probably be easier if we go ahead and take the knob off we got your standard d um, guitar knob these can uh, there's a lot of different ones that can replace these um, but you've got to not only take the shape of it it's going to be a six millimeter d knob but you also have to consider the depth of either the hole or the stud that's gonna go over that uh, just to make sure that it's gonna be in there. Now it is fully metal. Uh, a lot of these have been metal on the outside, plastic on the inside, some are plastic period. But this is a nice, decent metal off the bat. So <clears throat> looks like we've got, let me see, eight screws total. There we go, there's the top plate now. <clears throat> That is definitely a nice thing to find. This is $61, $61 budget, south facing, screw and PCBs, metal standoffs for the screws. I mean, so far we're looking pretty good. Now it does have a different type of gasket system, but I mean, there is a little bit of flex, not too much, but about what you'd expect on most of these 75 percent not a lot of them i mean unless we're bringing the tiger light but that's i mean a tko and that's a whole different story that puppy is flexy anyway so we've got your standard you know the i mean not standard your gasket system around the edges the bottom of the top um, obviously here we've got um the switches for i believe yeah okay so we've got wired bluetooth and or wireless with the I keep wanting to think, I hate when they when they don't take the opportunity to add a holder for the 2.4 gigahertz receiver. I don't do wireless very often, but for people that do, there should be a safe spot to keep it with the keyboard because I literally have a box of them and I don't know what they go to. I mean, a lot of times they don't even have any markings, so it's like, what are you gonna sit there, go through all your keyboards and say, is this the one? Anyway, I would think that would be a nice addition so if we lift up really quickly we can tell that the pcb is uh connected by a daughter cable uh i don't want to get too much in there but let's just see if we can get... oh i lost a gasket i guess we'll have to figure out how to put them on then huh ah, i think i know it's an h and a... yay yay <clears throat> So I don't want to disconnect the cables. Oh, that is a massive, um, it's a connector, all right. I don't know if it's a, a JST connector at that point. We've got the battery, it looks like, in its own compartment on a plastic, with a plastic uh, cover over the PCB. Huh. Now that's interesting. I've got to say that's a design I have not seen before. Um, that is, uh, uh, I don't know if that's good or not. I mean, I, I don't think it's bad. I just, I find that odd. And then we obviously, we have a very nice thick layer of silicone down here at the bottom. It's not quite as thick as the Vicron series, but it's damn near. Um, so I'm not sure. I mean, I'll figure out some mods to do to this thing, but we're just going to be doing a stock today and see how it sounds straight out of the box. And, um, but I just kind of wanted to give you a, a look at the internals because I also was curious about the internals. And I, I knew that if somebody else was making the video, I'd be asking, hey, how is it built on the inside? Now, obviously, we could take it apart further, see what's going on with that daughter cable. Um, we've also got <clears throat> a light indicator, I'm guessing, for charging. Uh, and then we have reset, two reset buttons. So very likely there is or will be a QMK Vive version. Who knows? I know that they're trying, they're starting to move that way, but 
We'll see. We will see. So we go ahead and put the top back on, make sure everything is lined up. I like to go ahead and just wanted to take a quick look at the inside. Like I said, I I thought there were some differences, and obviously there are. They're doing some new things. Why they put the battery on the back of the PCB is beyond me, uh, but it looks like it can be released, and I'm sure we can figure out some sort of mods for this thing. But, like I said, the, the other one actually sounded very decent out of the box, so I'm hoping that that's going to be the same uh, case in this situation. So today I decided to go with... I'm actually running out of switches. Uh, they are all being loaded up. These are some greens that I have used before, Akko Matcha greens, and they have been pre-lubed and broken in, so they should sound very nice. So let's go ahead and load these up, and we'll get on with picking out a set of keycaps. So here we are loaded up with some Akko CS Matcha green. Um, I actually meant to do the RGB prior. My apologies, I didn't think about it until afterwards, but at least the green has the window, so it won't tint too much. So we go ahead and plug it in. And we see that we have RGB. It is bright. It is not the brightest RGB I've seen, but it's decent. I mean, I have a lot of lights on in here and the RGB can still be seen. It's usually a good gauge that at night you're gonna have some nice RGB. I know most, of, most. I mean, I can't say most. I think a lot of people still like to have RGB, but they turn it on or off. It's nice to have the option there, especially if you wanna highlight a particular keycap set. So anyway, I haven't gone to the manual yet. I just wanted to plug in real quick and show you guys the RGB. Obviously, using these, they're gonna, if you did like a white color, obviously it's gonna be tinted a little green, but for the most part, it's not going through the housing. There's just kind of a window there for the LED light to shine through. But I mean, she's, she's a, a nice looking board. Uh, like I said, it reminds me of the uh, Jim MK Pro but obviously better and more than half the price, or less than half the price, I should say. Um, it, excuse me, it also has wireless for those folks that need the wireless ability. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it now. And I thought that this keycap set would be fitting for this since we have the two-tone. I mean, I know the orange isn't gonna match, although it is pretty close. So I figured we'd go ahead and go with the retro, trying to accentuate all the orange as much as possible. So let's go ahead and open this up and load her up with some carbon, carbon retro keycaps from Otto. And unfortunately, these are cherry. They're not, they're not ASA. ASA is being one of my preferred um, layouts. These are just the, uh, the cherry oh and there goes that and there goes the dynamite all right so basically we've got um i forgot what do we have the extras these are oh, hey we can really bring out the orange hey 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 cool all right so we're gonna try to go ahead and go with the orange alphas and just really uh make the orange pop for this one since i haven't even i hadn't even opened this bag yet so I um, guess we'll just pour them in the box and go. Let's load her up. And here we are with the James Donkey A375% loaded up. We've got the Akko Cherry keycaps um, double shot. I, I get, I don't get why Akko is discontinuing the uh, commercial or the uh, 
the memory boxes or the collector's boxes, whatever they want to call them. Um, it's just, they were just a good value for the caps. Anyway, um, as I said for the stat nerds before, I will, I do have some information for you guys. The chin height of this keyboard is 22 millimeters staring off the ground um, off of the surface that it's on. Now, we do have uh, three different or two different feet, so three different typing angles. But at the standard, sitting at, at the, just the flat, you're going to have a six degree angle of typing. And that's going to give you 33 millimeters at the back height. That means the back to the surface is going to be 3D. 33 millimeters. Now, if you take the first feet out, the smaller feet out of the two equations, you're gonna increase your typing angle up to nine degrees, and the top the top to the bottom of the floor is gonna be now 42 millimeters instead of 33. If we take out the final feet, the big feet, we're gonna bring the keyboard on up to a 12 degree typing angle with a total of 48 millimeter distance from the top to the surface. So other than that, I can't give you too much more specs until I start digging into it. I definitely, um, so far I'm liking what I see. I like the heft of it, you know, I mean, it's it. if I were to grab this blindly, I'd say, oh, this is a keyboard I must have already modified. You know, if I didn't know what it was, I couldn't see in the dark because it has that heft that's given by that bottom silicone pad. Now, that silicone pad, it's very similar to the one that was in the Facker Alice, which though it, it, it was very clean sounding, it was well muted. So that's why I'm gonna look into possibly doing something different, uh, whether I take the battery off the back of the PCB or not. I am definitely gonna be coming back to this one. Now today I wanna, do something just slightly different i'm going to go ahead and do the sound test here but i'm going to come back and just talk about the fi my final thoughts on the keyboard after the sound test does that sound like a plan will you guys stick around so you got to stick around until i say you know what I, i'm going to say so let's go ahead and do the sound test real quick So that sound test was not that bad for this being a stock keyboard and having about the same amount of lubrication on the stabilizers as the 1800 version of their keyboard. I mean, it's they basically just placed a dollop on the top. Uh, these could really be really lubricated, but for it being stock, I was I was surprised with the KBM 1800 as well. How well it came off sounding stock I thought it was gonna sound pretty rattly now I do want to mention because it was brought up in a single post now somebody else provided advice but I don't know if they had the issue as well or they were just 
throwing in ideas. Uh, but the post was that there was binding when using uh, SA or OEM keycaps, taller keycaps with these. And I've tried OEM, SA, ASA, MT3. I have yet to find a binding issue, but I see that there's more than enough space in between where the, the, the bottom of the space bar is and the edge of the case is. So I'm gonna assume that that unit they received was one that's defective. Hopefully um, they can get a replacement if they need any help. Let me know. I, I can jump in and help and see what I can I can do. I've I've been able to help in the past. Who knows? Anyway, uh, obviously it doesn't sound you know S tier off the bat, but I was honestly surprised. Uh, like I said, I'm used to the taller cap, so on the cherry I don't type quite as fast. But I still was I mean for the Aco greens lubed and this stock with some cherry keycaps, I thought it didn't sound too bad. One thing I did find when I first plugged it in, it didn't work, but I hadn't rebooted this workstation in a while, months. So I rebooted it, everything seems to be fine, it's working now. But one thing I did find along the way, which I think it's something that, in my opinion, it's the first time I've seen it as a stock feature on any of the knobbed keyboards, particularly the 75%. Um, just as usual, when you do just turning it, it acts as a volume rocker, lowering and raising your volume. If you press it, it acts as mute. Now, if you use function and you turn the wheel up or down, it's going to increase and decrease the brightness of your RGB. So, just another tip from your Uncle Mar. Anyway, I, for the price, I'm, I gotta say, this is well built. It has the metal inserts, it has screw in stabilizers, it's south facing for those that are concerned about interference. It is solidly built. It does have a metal D knob. Um, the case is, is well built. It, is, it comes with plenty of, um, of dampening material between the silicone at the bottom of the case, uh, the plate. Uh, I want to say it's probably a silicone rubber. It could be a strong pour on, but it's most likely a silicone. Um, it It's definitely a good value for the money and I intend to get in there. And then, I mean, obviously include the fact that it also has wireless, has 2.4 and Bluetooth, um, and it has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. So for those people that do care about it, now, like I said, I haven't gone into the software, but I do know that it is programmable. Um, obviously, I, I'm gonna need to program these keys because there's, there's a few keys I'm gonna need that I don't see just yet. Anyway, so this was my review of the James Donkey A3 75% knobbed keyboard bare bone kit, um, the two-tone edition. Uh, and I, that's why we love it up. So that's my review of the James Donkey A3 75% knob, south facing, screw and stabilizer, and well dampened 75% kit uh, that sells for roughly $60. Uh, this one I acquired from uh, Keep Monkey. Uh, I believe I did receive a discount, but I didn't, you know, it wasn't free. As far as an entrant, this this gives a couple of, of, of um, existing ones a run for their money. I mean, the fact of, like I said, I'm not sure about the plate. I don't believe it's it's fiberglass or FR4. I want to say it's probably PC, um, and I don't think it's POM, but I'll have to look that up and maybe put it in the description. But otherwise, it's it's got a lot of really good features, and it's solidly built. It's just well built, and um, as far as an entrant at this price, I mean, even when I started, you know, getting into it, when I started getting into it, GMMK Pros were considered budget. So, um, you know, and they were 169 to start. So, I'm just saying, we've made a lot of leaps in the last few years. Anyway, this is a. Uh, an interesting kit. I'm gonna be coming back to it and modding it. I I do enjoy it. I may actually uh, daily drive it here for a little while and see what it's like. Uh, I find that it has interesting angles. But again, I just I think it's well built, um, which 
you know, they, they took consider. It's almost like they were listening. Like, hey, people don't like it when we don't have metal inserts. Let's put metal inserts in. You know, people like easy gaskets. Well, those gaskets I've never seen before, but they're easy and they work. Um, you know, hey, people might want to control their RGB brightness just by hitting function. So, I feel like more thought. You know, was put into the design process. So I'm looking forward to any other keyboards that this company has to offer because this is a good value for a good price, in my opinion. Anyway, until the next transmission of Mech Tech Keyboards, keep calm, keyboard on.